it was kind of the eye of God, if you would. And the hippie, you know, hence hence the uh, name hippie, hip to the eye. Anyway, that's <laughs> that's all I had to say. Well, thank uh, you, those Barrett. Those are really neat drawings. Anyway, thank you. Thank you. Glad you liked the show. Let's get another caller in here. 503-288-4442. Yes, the Merkaba. Is, uh... Yeah, well, apparently there are hundreds, if not thousands, of people drawing mandalas now. Mm-hmm. And they have kids' art books, we're drawing, and uh, some some innovative teachers have kids drawing these in classes and so on. Mm-hmm. Colored pictures, paints. I have uh, some spiral chaos ones that I do mm-hmm. called Smirals, and they're they're done like this. Mm-hmm. Take two pages and make them go together. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you gaze, the easiest place besides the toilet is the clouds. The clouds. Yes. Well, and water. If you, especially eddies, eddies of water mm-hmm. with the rocks thing. I mean, apparently Da Vinci spent hundreds of hours meditating on the water. I've even seen it manifest in the boiling of grains. Oh. That's been interesting. Uh, not every time, but a few times I'll get that same uh, hexagon uh, shape when boiling. Okay, you remember the old egg beaters? Yes. There was this egg beater uh-huh. thing. You could see really awesome spirals in the egg beaters. Really, the, the patterns that it would weave mm-hmm. with there. But it, then, see, then that's but there's in the in the square box of the matrix in your kitchen. Right. <laughs> very very interesting. Now you you actually brought me a couple DVDs, which yes. I want to thank you yes. for. Uh, tell us a little bit about this one called The Love Code by Horowitz because I, I went to one of his lectures a couple yeah. years ago and that was the first time I'd heard about 528 hertz frequency um, according to Horowitz's research can heal damaged DNA by the actual sound frequency and its impact on the molecular structure. Have you ever looked at anything like that? Oh yeah, um, this one is his introduction, is his interpretation of the Da Vinci Code mm-hmm. but he calls it a love code mm-hmm. because he's looking at the vibrational frequencies like you mentioned 528. There's a rumor that the 528 is one of the elements in the movie Inception, which I saw the uh, uh, trailer to, and it was horribly war-torn, you know, all these people trying to steal people's dreams and stuff. Right. But this is more about healing and singing, singing and making the tones, Mm -hmm. you know, and making tones to heal your body. So it's in a way it's kind of like breathing. Sarah Felgio, uh, how do you say it? Sarah Felgio tones. I think there's nine of them. Uh, these are Gregorian chants, tones. Oh. Um, from I haven't read the book, but um, he was talking about nine different tones. Uh-huh. There's some tuning forks that, that go along with this, too. Well, Mesmer made some tuning uh, uh, crystals mm-hmm. that he would play to get people's vibra- raise people's vibrations mm-hmm. and grounding with magnetic fields and so on. There's a movie called Mesmer. He was the first magnetic healer in the West. Mm-hmm. But in Chinese, we call it qi kung, where we do things with our hands. Like if you do this with your hands, and then you put them on your body, and breathing. So that Leonard, wasn't just from the karate kid. That means something. <laughs> well, it depends on like you, if you can do it and blowing on uh-huh. it, and then you put it like there's even a healing thing of your eyes that you can heal your eyes by doing this thing, getting your energy going a little bit, and then doing it on here. There's a couple books on this. Mm-hmm. Oh, the art of seeing, actually. You mentioned something to me earlier today about kind of cleansing the thoughts uh, with, with water when we're being bombarded with these charged particles, oh, solar yeah. activity. Oh, yeah, water on your head. Just water right on yeah. the Oh, yeah. I, when I was living in Hawaii, I did it t- five or ten times a day. I mean, because water is cleansing. Mm. Uh, why do people love showers? I mean, they love showers. Right. People, I have to have my shower. And there are now millions of hot tubs. Yeah. And what we what we do for the energy thing is we get in the hot tub and then we take a cold shower. You know, I've actually I went to Austin Hot Springs for the first time about a month ago. That's a natural one. So you yeah. have to be careful we don't get burnt. But I can definitely feel the the energy rising from that little. I think it was right off the Clackamas River. Yeah, there's probably a dozen hot springs in Oregon that people go to, and this the the cold the hot and the cold thing mm-hmm. is so invigorating. But people who don't just stay like couch potatoes, they don't really know this feeling. So there must be something about those, uh, what do they call them, the polar bears? People that just run right into the freezing <laughs> ocean. I can't, I can't imagine myself doing that, but there's always that shock of when you dunk in cold water. You know, yeah, you're well, kind of cold and you're gradually wading out the river. Oh, I find it very hard to get way, to get in very cold water for very long. Ever since I was, I had a damaged liver. Mm. Liver is the, and, and thyroid are the two glands that keep mm. you warm. Liver is with the digesting, right? And the and the thyroid is to balance your whole metabolism. Mm-hmm. So if you have a damaged thyroid and or liver, cold is very. That's why people. Oh, it's so cold out, 
and then turn up the heat. See, so it's a really a kind of a weakness. That's why Tai Chi, yoga, right. Qigong are so good for the body energy to balance. No, exactly. We definitely need a lot more balance. We only have about three more minutes left. How should we conclude tonight? I want to show. I just want to show you a, a stretch that I do frequently. Okay. And that does adjust my spine. There we go. I always prefer this one. Yeah. Yeah, that works too. Bending backwards, breathing deeply. Yeah, squatting. Have yeah. you heard of the polarity squat? Polarity squat. Yeah. I think we all missed that, but we got that one. Oh, oh okay. Now, you well, say you're going to do my chart real quick. Is there oh, a way I could be crammed into what, what? What does my chart say? If we well, do that February sun, Okay, I'll just go over to the main one. Your okay. sun's in Aquarius on the cusp of Pisces. Your moon's in Taurus. And that means sun and Aquarius is a very new age, very aqua very spacey, very open mind, open mind, like a mind in space. And then your rising sign, which is the eastern horizon, is Sagittarius. Now, Sagittarius is this launching. You have a tremendous, like, launching ability to expand, you know, and you're always wa expanding or wanting to expand. Mm. And then your setting sign is the opposite which is Gemini, but that's Gemini's arms, hands, and lungs. Uh -huh. So then you're using your hands to Seem get to all tend these to do that. things going together, but receptive. Mm -hmm. So you're receptive to all tremendous amount of opposition. See, because uh, Gemini is opposite in flux. We're that's leaving. right, because that's the energy work that I do. When I do my energy work, folks, I don't talk about it, I do this. And yeah. also Aikido and things of that nature that really get the energy going. Yeah, and circles, make all kinds of circles. Circular motion. So the yin-yang is, yeah. that's what the, the symbol of Qigong and the mm -hmm. Taoism is. And, and the Gemini, and you have your Gemini is your setting sign of Gemini. You're receptive to all these differences of balancing. And, well, we could go into the planets, because every planet has a sign. And your, uh, another feature is you have three planets in Virgo, nearly conjunct, meaning together. Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn all in Virgo. It's tremendous attention to detail. See, most of the generalist Aquarius, they're too, they're, they're too really spacey mm -hmm. to get into much detail. Wow. And so you have, the, and Virgo is the sign of the harvest. Mm -hmm. Where you're, we're harvesting, I have triple Virgo also, harvesting all of the patterns or what we want out of those patterns. I think sometimes I'm taking in too much information. Sometimes they get some stuff concretely down because yeah. I'm looking in too many directions at yeah. once. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. A, that's a, a quality of Aquarius to get yeah. space, space. Oh, I'm spaced out. Michael, this is one of the most outside the box shows that I've ever produced since I've been doing the show. It's always a pleasure having you on. Yahoo. Well, Thank you. We're we're and blessed. he's down in Eugene, folks. So those of you that are down in Eugene, look him up. He's got his website Go there. Go and get him. I went out. Uh, Start growing some food. Quick, yeah. couple plants we should be growing right now. Vegetables. It's oh, uh, going in the fall. Everything you can eat. Yeah. And there, there's not a couple. There's hundreds. There's so much. More than yeah. what we're aware of. Well, there's a lot of farms now that are serving the city. Mm -hmm. You go to the farmer's market, the grower's market. Mm -hmm. They're fabulous. Well, thank you very much, Michael. We'll talk to you all next week. Until then, remember, as always, the path to the ultimate truth still lies within. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. Uh -huh. All right.